Well, there's the threading attachment on the peerless lathe. I'm turning some drill rod here down to the last thou for the major diameter to start getting ready to put that in the uh, uh, thread cutting attachment and cut some threads on it. Using a graver here, cleaning it up a little bit. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Alright, let's get a file on this. We'll put a little file to it. Clean it up. There we go. And now we go. Let's get a marker and mark it up so that when we make the first pass, we can check it with the uh, pitch gauge. Yeah, this is the book that got me all started on this uh, thread attachment. It's pretty old, 1938, written by the Levine brothers. A lot of good stuff in there for clockmakers and uh, clock repair stuff. But it was the thread cutting attachment that really got my thing. Gave me a lot of drawings. These are all the parts that I built from that book. Uh, just sitting there. This is the NPED Threads P computer program that's on Lays UK. I'll put a link to it on in the introduction, but it really helped me to figure out which gears I needed to make and what and to use to for this little attachment. It gives you also the equation if you want to work it out mathematically, and it's based on a driven and a driver gear setup using a compound gears. So it's pretty easy to use. You go up to the top here and we're gonna there you go you click and you let it know that you're going to be doing metric and then you tell it you got a one meter uh, millimeter pitch screw and then you want your readings out in inches and then your TPI I'm going to tell it I need 32 and my max percent error is going to be 0.1 and uh, I already got my gears in there so they're just loading them up and then I'll just ask it to there you go, do my calculations, and it came up with a 48 and an 84 tooth gears for the driven, and the 32 and 100 for drivers, and it had a 0 .012 error, so that's almost perfect. So that was perfect, and uh, that's what I'm using here for this uh, setup. And this is the hob that I use to make it. It's a, it makes 48 di uh, diametrical pitch with a 20 degree pressure angle. and. Uh, I've made quite a few different hobs, and these are two other hobs for uh, two other change gear setups that I've got, and uh, for other lathes. Just keep them around. If I ever need any more gears, I can make them pretty quick. And yeah, it's a spiral hob. If you're interested in hobs, I've got a couple of videos out on uh, hobs that you might find interesting. And that's the cross slide attachment. You need to have a Z and an X axis. There's a Z axis there. So you need to have a lead screw for the Z axis. And then the X axis here actually has an upper and a lower. And to move it in, to feed in, I use mostly the top. You see that you can also rotate it, but it rotates the Z axis. So it's uh, not that useful for this thing. But here's the extension that I had to put on the lead screw to be able to use it. Let me show you some pictures of how I did that. First thing I did was break down the uh, uh, cross slide and uh, clean everything up and get everything taken care of. And there's the lead screw, the, the Z-axis lead screw that needed to be extended. So I had to get the handle off the end there. and That's my old Mosley lathe there. So I mounted in the Mosley lathe and then I used a graver here to put a little dimp in the front there so I could hand hold a uh, drill bit, drill out a hole there. Then I made a little extension piece here out of a uh, coal rolled steel, flattened the sides of the uh, part going in there so that I could braze it and I brazed it in position. And it was a little sloppy with the brazing but it was plenty oversized. So I just took it back to the Mosley and uh, cleaned it up, trimmed it to size. And uh, see here, next picture is going to show you the, uh, the final uh, 
outcome of that and you can see it's cleaned up pretty quite nicely really happy with the results it fit in there quite nice here you can see the extension that uh, I put on some uh, couplers that I bought they were for an RC uh, motorboat and I bought them and I got a, a bag of them for pretty cheap made a little uh, uh, way to collect, connect the lead screw to the piece of aluminum on the end there. That piece of aluminum is soon going to be the banjo. Here it is all cut to be the banjo. And down the bottom there you can see two pieces of drill rod that I for holding in the arms. There's the bearing for that and it's got a, a pin in there because it's held in place with by the pin and just one Phillips head screw. And there's the spindle that goes through the uh, the draw bar that goes through the spindle, and it's uh, uh, got the collet on one end and the handle for turning and the number one driving gear there. It was made out of an auto brake line, uh, pretty cheap to make. There, if you try to buy a draw bar for a uh, watchmaker's lathe, they're quite expensive, but you can make them with a uh, an auto uh, uh, brake line. And these are the various arms that I have. That first arm right there, that's for an idler gear. And the other two are set up for compound gears. And that's the one for the idler gear. And these two are for compounds. You can see the bush in there. And that brass bush holds the two gears so that they rotate together. there each one of the uh, uh, has a keyway in it each one of the gears has a keyway and the bush has a key that's actually part of the bush and it goes in there and it holds the gears so they rotate together and to make that I just took a piece of uh, 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 brass rod slid it and then put a piece of brass flat stock in there and soldered it in place. And as I needed it, I just cut it. I will add a few gears here. Makes it kind of interesting looking. And there's a compound gear for you. The two gears that are held together with that brass bush. They rotate together. There you go. And they're rotating that big one there. That's an idler gear just to fill in the area in between there. It doesn't change the ratio at all, but it does change the direction of the uh, rotation. That's, that's all an idler gear does. But I needed it to fill in the distance between the drivens. Okay, now we're depthing the gear train, make sure everything's depth correctly, making sure that it runs, the lead screws are running, add a little drop of oil here and there where we need it. Seems to be running pretty good. That's what we need is a nice clean run like that so we get ready to, to actually cut the threads. Alright, we're ready to make that first pass. We got the first pass done. So now we'll take a, a pitch gauge, take a look at the pitch. Looks pretty good to me. So now it's just a repetition back and forth of cutting the threads. And uh, I'm not cutting very deep. It's only a 32 pitch. Uh, 8 by 32 so it's not very deep it takes a few passes and it's a direct uh, I couldn't put it off at a, at a 29 degree angle like you would with a uh, with an atlas or something like that I, it just doesn't uh, have the rotation that's needed to do that so you you're making a direct pitch in here so your uh, next direct drive in there so you want to Go slowly, doesn't take that long. Yeah, I'm noticing the camera's moving a little bit. I'm sorry about that. That little shake in there. Yeah, sorry about that. But there's only a couple paths. There we go. Now we're going to power. We take a graver and round the edges here and put the finishes touch on the end there and yeah, clean it up a little bit. I got some thousand grit paper with a foam backed 
that's going to polish it up nicely and make it you know, make it ready for the next operation. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's yeah, it came out quite nice. I'm happy with that. That'll do it. That's pretty good. Now we're on the lathe and we'll part off the, the end there and get that cleaned up. There we go. Get that drill rod off of there. Now we're over on the mill. We'll put that little, we're using a slitting saw and we'll put the slit in there for the slot for the screwdriver. Alright, this is the finished screw. And that's what it looks like when it came off the uh, lathe. Okay, now in the next video, I'm going to mount the, uh, the screw in the end of this holder and then I'm going to take a shop made uh, screw polisher that I made in my shop here and put it on the lathe and I'll use a uh, iron lap with polishing paste uh, and I'll polish it flat get it nice and flat and contour and then get ready and I'll move it over on into this holder and that will be held in a vise and then it'll be hand turned. It goes in there like that. And I'll be using a bell metal lap and I'll be turning it and doing the final polishing that. And then well actually the final polishing happens with a box wood lap. And when that's done, then it goes down into the cellar and it'll be hardened and quenched. And then it comes back up and it goes through that process a second time. And when it's done, then I put it in a screw plate and using an alcohol burner this time, I'll heat it very slowly and temper it unto it till it gets to a nice uh, dark blue color. And uh, that'll all be on the next video.